This guy's house, I think. He has a house in the middle of the marsh. There we go, Donnie. Yep, we are off. When you think of the Middle East, you probably imagine most people living in a landscape that looks like this. But five hours south of Baghdad, in the marshes of Mesopotamia, live the Marsh Arabs. For thousands of years, these communities have been building their homes and mosques out of reeds and fishing, raising water buffalo, and growing rice and dates for their livelihoods. However, when the Marsh Arabs rebelled against Saddam Hussein in 1991, he retaliated by draining their marshlands. He cut the water so no one can hide in the marshes. All, all of this was marshes. This decimated their environment creating food shortages and health crises. And as a result, their population dwindled from 250,000 to only 40,000 in just 15 years. Since the overthrow of Saddam though, water flow has been restored and the ecosystem, as well as the communities, have begun to recover. Currently, I was on my way to the small town of Chibayish in Southern Iraq to meet up with a marsh Arab named Abu, who had invited me deep into the wetlands to spend the night with his family. You guys going hippo mode? Yeah. 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 This looks like prime time hippo mode. Whoa! Tandem! Ready for liftoff! 7.8. Yes, yes, yes. Very cool. It is beautiful here. I cannot wait to take my first dip. How are you? How are you? How are you? Is this your bike? Needs a tire, it seems. Right now we are picking up supplies to take with us into the marsh. We're gonna be grilling chicken wings tonight, and then french fries? Yeah. Oh wow, okay. What else do we need? Oh, we need toilet paper. There's not gonna be um, a toilet out there. I might also need to pick up some toothpaste pudding. And then we should be good. Are we going to your family's house? Yeah. Cool, nice. The sun was sinking fast, so we needed to quickly load the boats and begin our journey if we wanted to make it to Abu's home before nightfall. Can't wait to fire these babies up. I love marshes. Uh, a swamp's more attractive sibling. This is very comfortable. Here we go, Donnie. Yep, we are off. Or at least I thought we were. This guy's hopping on too. Last minute. Almost missed the boat, bud. Bye-bye. Okay, this time we were actually off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we almost left there. We got very close <laughs> to departure. Uh, he bring uh, wood to make fire. Oh, All right. I'm okay yep. with that. <laughs> yeah, we do need some wood. No, I killed me. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at that motor. It starts with one pole. My friend's boats don't do that. Give it some juice. The deeper we went, the more life we began to see. First, it was fishermen and water buffalo. Oh, whoa! We almost just hit a couple water buffalo. And then people's homes. Hello! And finally, as dusk became night, we pulled into our homestay. All right, we're pulling up to his house. Hello. Stand up. Okay. <laughs> I might have to lose the chains. I can't see a thing. <laughs> Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. Hello. Johnny. Oh, hey John. Yeah. She's saying hi to you. Sama, what is it? Salam alaikum. No, Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. All right, we're heading into uh, our room for the night. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. 
This is an amazing way to live. We arrived just as it was starting to get dark, so we couldn't see much, but we're inside one of their huts right now. It seems like they have a complex. This hut, it's so warm and it's so soft because they just have this like rug of reeds. And so all I really need is a blanket tonight and I'll be good. I'm loving it out here. These kids were pumped to see us because we brought them a bunch of snacks. You guys get some chips? Nice. How's the juice box? Baga. Baga? Oh. This is kind of their makeshift torch. And they put it in here. If you tried to just stand it up, it would fall over and set the whole place on fire. <laughs> no more chocolate? I've got some gummy bears. Gummy bears. Um, I'm gonna find them. All right, so I got three. Now don't eat them all at the same time or else you'll get gummy tummy. When I was your age, I used to get it all the time. It's funny because I literally I didn't know there was going to be a single child here. So I did buy those gummies for myself, but hey, more than happy to give them away. I think we're gonna be grilling up some chicken wings, having a bit of a campfire. I use soya sauce, ketchup, yogurt, lemon, uh, salt, oil, barbecue sauce, and <coughs> paper. All right, the wings have been prepped. I think we are going to throw them on the grill now. Yeah. We had to come out and make this big fire so we can cook the wings. If you had a fire this big inside the reed house, it would fill with smoke because there's no chimney in there, right? Yeah, so they just have small little fires to, to keep it warm and the smoke just drifts out the door. Are you on Facebook? I'm on Instagram. Instagram? Yeah. Log off, bro. Hi. <laughs> Oh, those wings are gonna get a nice sear. Yeah. Using a couple rocks to prop them up so they're just a little bit above the coals. Yeah, this looks like quite a spread. Yeah. We got pickles, tomatoes, bunch of wings, french fries, right? Yeah. Bread, onion, the Iraqi way is to use your hands, right? Yeah, use your hands. Okay, well, I'm gonna put the camera down and dig in. Let's see how your sauce is. Oh, yeah. You done good. <laughs> mm -hmm. These wings, they aren't too dry and they aren't too raw. They're perfect. Thank you. Chai. The Marsh Arabs apparently drink tea from sunup to sundown, but there wasn't enough caffeine on the planet to keep me up any longer. I think I might have to call it a night. I believe they call this glamping. Yeah. I mean, they could just market this as glamping. Yeah. And probably triple the amount of tourists they're getting. Oh, yeah. All right, that was quite the day, but now it's time to hit the hay. Literally hit the hay, or shall I say, the reed. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning when I'll be going for my first Iraqi hippo mode in the marshes of Mesopotamia. Doesn't that sound cool? The marshes of Mesopotamia. Sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings, but nope, straight out of planet Earth. Uh, I woke up pretty early, but I was kind of out cold the whole night. <laughs> I don't think that was the case with John. No. <laughs>
Our driver, while one hell of a chauffeur, apparently was also a prolific snorer who kept John and Ahmed awake for most of the night. Oh, I guess I was like one person away from him. I think you helped block the sound <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. What a sight to wake up to. <laughs> when in the marshes, do what the marsh Arabs do. I saw a couple other guys crank a hoon first thing in the morning. Normally, that's not my MO, but just try to blend in. Oh, beautiful day. <laughs> Is that a frisbee? They're chucking the mellow biscuit. That's the last thing I expected to see first thing when I wake up. People playing frisbee. Frisbee bros. Behind the back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's have some breakfast. Mmm. This tastes exactly like a bagel with cream cheese, actually. This is awesome. Okay, so we're about to hop back on the boat and go for a cruise all the way to the other side of the marshes where they apparently have some solid swimming holes to go hippo mode. This will be my most historic hippo mode sesh of my entire life. I mean, this is where the ancient Sumerians were going hippo mode. The first civilization on the planet. I got my bathing suit on under the pants and I'm ready to get wet. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Bye bye bro. Bye bye bro. Bye bye bro. <laughs> and we are off. Bye bye. Our first order of business was to head back to Chibayu so Abu could buy some fish for a barbecue later that day. While he went to the market, I was told to wait in the town's Mudif. So now we're in this giant reed hut. This is the fanciest uh, reed. This is a reed mansion. Made entirely from things they got from the marshes. For the Marsh Arabs, a Moody functions as a public hall where tribes welcome guests, settle community affairs, hold religious ceremonies, and absolutely slug tea and coffee. The coffee here is so strong, so they only pour like a sip at a time. The coffee woke me up, but didn't help untie the giant knot my stomach was in. So the first chicken wing I ate last night was perfectly cooked. The second one was a little pink, and I think that's why my stomach is cramping up right now. But don't worry, I'm gonna stay strong until I get my hippo mode in. I'm not gonna take an aqua dump. We picked up the fish. We picked the fish and we will make a barbecue inside the marshes. It's called masgoof. Masgoof. We will eat masgoof today. Masgoof, we're getting goofed. Does he have a gun? Ah, it's hunting. Oh, hunting. No, a belt. Very beautiful. Today's a Saturday, so there are some Iraqi tourists out here on the boats too. Ever since arriving in the marshes, I had seen water buffalo lurking amongst the reeds. But once I saw them swimming across a canal, knew I couldn't wait any longer to take a dip. It was finally time for the most historic hippo mode of my life. Rocking some bowls, beachwear. 
jump or slide? I don't want to like throw this boat off balance. I think you jump. Can you ask him how deep? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay, not very deep. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off the back. Into the marshes of Mesopotamia. Incredible. I am so pumped for this. Here we go. Wow. Not as warm as I thought the waters in Iraq would be. Ooh. Cold. But very refreshing. Oh, there's a water buffalo over here. I'm gonna go swim with the cows. Hey, buddy. We're gonna try to get up close and personal with these water buffalo. Buffalo mode. I'm not, I'm not an alligator. Oh. I come in peace. They're taking off. I'm also probably swimming in their poop right now, so I'm gonna head out. Can you pass me a cigarette? Thank you. Hippo hoon mode in the marshes of Meso. I swim in the marshes of Mesopotamia. I feel like that could be like a Paul Simon song. Yeah, that's full hippo mode. So the water's a little chilly, but now I have fully adjusted to the water and it is pleasant. And I got to swim close to some water buffalo. The first time I saw water buffalo swimming in here, I thought they were crocodiles. Cause that's like, you can only see the top of their head. But nope, just your friendly neighborhood water buffalo. Except not all of them are friendly. Apparently this guy, he can tell just by one look if it's a friendly water buffalo or an unfriendly. And uh, he gave me the green light to swim towards those. But then I, I guess they got spooked and they swam away from me. All right, I'm gonna do one more lap and then I'll get back on the boat. Fishing camp? Yeah, yeah they sell fish. Okay. I think it's illegal. Because now is the season of uh, to make fish uh, ground. So it's forbidden to hunt now. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. We had already picked up fresh fish in town, so there was no need to buy more off the black market. But I sure was getting hungry. Pulled up to this little island in the middle of the marshes to fry up some fish and have lunch. So this guy got the fire going in like 30 seconds. And then we're gonna have some shisha. Yeah. It's gonna be one hell of a barbecue. <laughs> أبوك شلون سماك وصديقك لو زعل وياك. When you don't have any booze, book is the only way to take the edge off. Can you ask him what type of fish? أبو حيدر يانا رح نأكل اليوم. السمت. السمت is very delicious. It almost looks like a flounder. بويان السماء كان السماء. Time for a fish fry. I'm gonna start calling myself Donna Fish Fry. Not a 
lot of bones in that bite. Tastes fresh. Glad we didn't get it from that fish camp. A few of those didn't look so fresh. Fish taco. Mm. This might be the best meal of the trip. There you go, bacon. Fish bacon. Oh yeah, fish bacon. Two more boats just pulled up to our fish fry spot. There's enough room for a few more bonfires. It soon became clear that our New Island friends hadn't come to barbecue. They were here to party. Are they gonna dance a circle around me? Beautiful. Then, from what I gather, something akin to a freestyle battle broke out with one of the newcomers and our host Abu exchanging bars. I didn't understand a word that was said, but it was pretty clear that Abu ate mouth his ass. Wow. Yeah. You won the freestyle battle. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> you showed him who's boss. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dominated. <laughs> it was sadly time to head back to dry land. But after my time with the Marsh Arabs, it was never more clear I'd made the right decision coming to Iraq. These last 24 hours in the marshes encapsulated all the reasons I fell in love with travel to begin with. There's nothing quite like visiting places and experiencing cultures you didn't even know existed, only to be treated by the people you encounter with the same warmth and hospitality you'd expect from your next door neighbor. And ultimately, discovering you have a lot more in common with them than you could ever imagine. Frisbee bros. <laughs> 20 years of negative news coverage can really warp your views on a country. But Iraq isn't defined by the headlines on warfare, terrorism, and protests we've seen over the years. But by the communities of people who despite constant political instability, continue to strive for a better tomorrow. Their stories may rarely be front and center in the media, but it sure makes me feel better knowing they're out there, still holding on to the only way of life they've ever known. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Very nice meeting you. I have you can give them to your children. One, cranking hoods. I should have watch it. Oh yeah. This is just hippo. It kind of looks like the water buffalo. A hippo motor. I want to jump with my club. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye, Marsh Arabs. What an incredible, I think you're only there probably 24 hours. <laughs>